Okay, everybody, here we are with 111.5 or part two because I made the video too darn big. I had to come out here and do another beginning and do another ending so that I could complete the two sections of this video. Sorry that it had to be this way. Sorry that I ramble on so much, but I don't know if you want to watch this or not, but you can go ahead and do it if you're interested in what I'm going to do here. Okay, guys, this is how uh, I get my length and measure for my grades, okay? And it's not the most accurate thing in the world, but it is accurate to, to figure out your track length. I use string, and I have some nylon string that I've had for years. And what I do is, let me turn around. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to turn my back to you, but this is how I do it. I take the string... I lay it out. I have a tape measure laid out here, and I don't, I don't know if I'm in the camera or out of the camera, if I'm out of the camera, too bad. I'm over here at 100 inches. Got the, the uh, string all laid out, or got the tape measure all laid out. I'm going back. I need a pair of scissors. I'm going back to the end over here, and I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie a little knot in the end of the string here so that it doesn't unravel on me is the basic crux of that and we're going to start the knot on the end is going to start at, at zero and we're going to go to 25 inches which is right here where my hand is this is not rocket science it's just logic um, and I'm going to tie a knot at 25 inches okay So now I have a knot at approximately 25 inches. Let me measure it out again. Ah, the knot turned out a little less than 25 inches, so I can rectify that if I don't pull it too hard. I'm off by about a quarter of an inch, which is not important. But if we're going to make this string one time, we might as well make it right, correct? So I rolled the knot over. Now let's see what we got. I'm at exactly 25 inches from that knot to that knot. Okay? So now we're going to take that knot and we're going to go, we could do this at 25 inch increments, but I'm going to go to 50 and we're going to tie a knot at 50. Okay? So let me hold it at 50. Let me bring my string around and make a knot at 50. I'm going to tie it looser this time, more loose. Now between the first knot and the second knot we should have another 25 inches. So we're going to go from 25 to 50 and I'm still a little off so we're going to flip this knot over. Like I say, it's not rocket science, but we, you know, if we're making this tool, we might as well just make it once. So we're flipping that knot. When I say flipping it over, basically I just loosen it up, loosen it up and kind of slide the knot down a little bit. You'll get the hang of it if you make one of these. So 25 to 50. Now I'm exactly on 50 inches here without stretching the string. So now we're going to go 50 inches to 75 inches. Once again, I have the string. We're going to take and tie a knot in it. And maybe you've already decided that you can see where I'm going with this. And since they've all been short, we're going to make that one just a hair longer. So now I have the end knot and I have three knots in the string. Let's check the distance of this one. 20, we're, and we're going to do 25 to 50, even though it's to 75, and I'm way off on this one. So we're going to loosen this knot up, and I didn't tighten this one down very much. We're going to loosen this up, and we're going to move this one down considerably. And we're going to measure, measure 25, a little too far that time, so we're going to tighten it back towards me. If this is making any sense, it will when you start tying knots in this. If you have some heavy string nylon like this, um, it'll make sense how you can move the knots up and down. 
And when you get them where you want them, and that's exactly 25 inches, then what we can do is we can cut, so we don't have to deal with this giant long piece of string. I'm just going to cut the string. And I'm going to do an, another 25 inches, which would be 25 inches to the end. So if I go to 50, and I tie, and you can make this string as long as you want. I mean, you can make it the length of your layout. You can find out how much uh, run length you have. So I'm going to tie that loosely, go from my last knot to 50, and I am right on. When I say 50, when I say 50, actually this would be to this last knot right here, to the first knot I tied down there, is going to be 100 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off, leave a little bit of slack here. So now what I have is I have a, a little over 100 inches of string here with a knot at every 25 inches. So if I'm going down two inches, uh, my first 25 inches, I can go one half an inch, another half inch. So by the time I get to 50, I should be down an inch. By the time I get to 75, inch and a half. By the time I get to 100, two inches. So if I lay this out on the layout, and we're going to take it out here, and we are going to lay it on some track and show you how it works. But this is my tool. This is my measuring tool for how far I need to be down when I start laying the track, how far down that track needs to be to get a 2% grade. And if it was 3 inches, it would be a, a 3 quarters of an inch every 25 inches. And you'd be at 3 inches by the time you got to 100, I believe. But um, I'm not good with math, and in my head especially. So let's go back in and test this thing out. Okay, so I know you, in this video, you're going to look at a lot of the back of me, probably. But if I want to know where I need to be or how much grade I need to decrease, uh, and I have this string, I can put the string where either on the track that I have now, and I can just lay it. This is not, like I say, it's not rocket science. We're just laying the string either on the road bed, if we had just road bed here, or in this case, on the track. And every time I get to a knot, I can hold the string, or I can hold the string at any point, and just generally lay it out. And I'm not going to go any further than that right now, uh, because you'll get the idea here. With the string laid out, where it is right now, and I don't know where this camera angle is taking you, but if I start over here at the bridge, I should be down a half an inch here instead of up a half an inch like it is right now. So I will basically be down at one inch total here from this level. Uh, anyway, you'll get the idea. Uh, I will be down uh, uh, a quarter of an inch here. I mean, I'm sorry, a half inch here, half inch here, half inch here. And I don't, you're, I'm probably out of the camera over here, but I'm right at the cattle pen at Schmelly Meats. So that would take me down uh, an inch and a half. So if I stretch that string out, I should be down to two inches by the time I get over there by the um, double crossover, if that makes sense. If I stretch out another 20, 25 inches, that's going to take me just under the cross, or right in the middle of the crossover, double crossover. So from the bridge to over there, I can go down two inches. And that would be a 2% grade. If I need to go down further than that, I will. I hate, to, I don't want to really do 3%, but if I have to, I certainly will. But you, you get the idea here. My string laid out on the layout, if I follow that, that method there, um, it will get me where I need to go. So um, you, by laying the string out, I can prove that I can get below the track level over there when I get to that point. I hope that makes sense. And I may make it 3% just from here down to there so that 
instead of being, let's see, instead of being down, um, what did I say, two inches way over there, I may want to be down two inches over here so I can get up to the double crossover. I don't know. I'm going to make that work. We're going to cross over or go under wherever we can and come up. It may be underneath the layout. It may go under and then get in between the two tracks here and come up to the double crossover. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. But wherever the levels work out here to get over or under, the, the two tracks over and under each other, that's where it will take place. Okay? And... Uh, if there needs to be a slight incline for a short distance, that's the way it will be. Uh, like I say, I don't anticipate having any trouble getting up and down because I only run about 14 cars at a time. That's my maximum siding length, uh, 14 or 15, depending on if they're 40-foot cars. Uh, and I don't exceed that very often unless I'm just running a train through that's longer than that. But you get the idea of my string tool here. Um, I think we're just going to wrap this up today. I'll probably do another video when I start taking out some of this scenery and remove most of the fascia down to uh, where the wood is over there. I'm going to remove this fascia, or at least this fascia around here all the way over to the doorway so that I can see what I'm doing. And let me get down off this stool and I'll show you what else I got to do in the process of that. Okay, we're not going to be able to see a whole lot under here right now just because there's not a lot of light out here. But you can see that if I'm down to two inches, I'll be just right on top of these stringers here. So these, uh, let's see here, that stringer there, the track will be almost on, if not on that stringer by the time I get here. This stringer will likely have to be cut just, just a hair because I'll probably be down another half inch by there. And then this one will have to be cut, this one here will have to be cut, this one here will really have to be cut, and so on until I drop down going way back there. And of course the, uh, the, um, the front of the cloth there is in the way, you know, for us to see what's going on there. But, uh, but anyway, all that cloth is going to come off. All this fascia is going to come off. These, the uh, push button switches will have to be disconnected or removed from the fascia, period. And uh, the other thing I face is I'm going to have to take all of these cabinets out of here. And Gavin has some over here on this side back here. And they're all going to have to go either down there or outside the layout, maybe all the way out to the shed temporarily until I get this work done. Uh... Let me swing around here. I'm on my knees, so bear with me. I'm not very good on my knees. Um, you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but on that uh, L girder back there, every, periodically there are some holes. If you look, well, actually, right there in the center of the picture, there's uh, some paint drippings that come down. You can see two holes there. Those two holes, I had another piece of wood tied to the uh, wall there and there was a shelf bracket mounted to that on the on the previous layout that took me down to my staging yard underneath. I'm just basically going to replicate that and I still have the brackets. So all that will require is a piece of wood all the way down to the corner. Um, to get the track on a downhill slope down to the to the shelf down here. Anyway, I feel like I'm kind of rambling on them. You guys are probably tired of it by now. But um, that's pretty much what's going on for now, and I'll update you as stuff progresses. Once again, I appreciate you watching and putting up with two-part video. I don't hardly ever do a two-part video, but I just thought this might warrant it. And as usual... Thanks for watching again.